Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hey, what's up? My name is Caitlin, and today I'm gonna be doing a tag that's called the Beauty Brand Tag. I saw Mel Thompson do this, and she said that Sarah Brooke is the one that created this tag. So definitely go check out both of their videos for sure after you watch this one. But this is just like a 15, 15, 15 question beauty tag about the beauty industry and beauty products and all of that stuff that I found very interesting and I really enjoyed watching her video. So I decided to do it myself. So I definitely encourage you guys to do it too if you are a creator um, or if you do YouTube videos or maybe this will be your first video. So the first question is, think back to when you first started your makeup collection. Any brands you use them that you use now? So I kind of took this one two different ways because when I first started doing my makeup, I was in high school, junior high age, and I used a lot of like drugstore stuff like CoverGirl, Maybelline, L'Oreal, that kind of thing. And I don't really use a lot of those brands now because the majority of them, unfortunately, are not cruelty free. But the one that I still remember loving is CoverGirl. So I do have a little CoverGirl spray here. I have a lot of CoverGirl products, but this is just the one that I, I immediately was like, oh, that spray. I love this spray. This is not something I used to use because this is newer, but I've always used CoverGirl. I've always loved CoverGirl. I did stop using them for a while once I realized they weren't cruelty free, but they are cruelty free now, which is amazing. And I hope that other um, big drugstore brands like Maybelline and L'Oreal, that kind of thing, follow in their footsteps. But CoverGirl is definitely one of them. And the other brand that I am going to talk about is Urban Decay because when I first started my love for YouTube and start, first started really getting into makeup because I didn't really have anybody in my life that was like really into my makeup. My mom is like kind of tomboyish. <laughs> she doesn't really wear a lot of makeup. She doesn't really like a lot of makeup. Like she wears like foundation, some mascara, maybe some eyeshadow and that's what she does, which is great, grand, wonderful, fine. But I was kind of the same way because I didn't have anyone that was into makeup. Like I'm the oldest of my siblings, that kind of thing. So when I found YouTube and I found makeup, Urban Decay was the brand that I fell in love with first. Um, this is the very first thing I purchased from any high-end thing. I didn't even know what Sephora was back in the day. So this is the first thing that I ever purchased from Sephora. This is the Urban Decay um, Beauty with an Edge palette. And I remember buying this because I thought everything was so expensive. And this was on sale for $15 in their sales section and I bought it and it still works really well. I mean, probably shouldn't be using it, but it works. Also, my hand is stained, my arm is stained. I've said that in like every video I've done here lately because it is, but love this, love Urban Decay. So question two, any brands you've moved on from? So this one might be a little, get me in trouble a little bit, but Obviously anything not cruelty free that I used to use, I've moved on from because they're not cruelty free. But the other one that stands out to me is Huda Beauty. Um, <laughs> I used to love Huda Beauty and I would be like super excited and be like, oh, I need all of her things. I don't ever purchase them though as a thing, which is why I think I've moved on from them. That, and I don't know, it's just something that about the brand that rubs me the wrong way. I don't know what it is. Um, I mean, I know she's controversial, but like I've unsubscribed from her YouTube channel. I just don't, I don't know. I don't know what it is. And there's like other beauty people that I watch, Jeffree Star, Manny MUA, that kind of thing that are also controversial, but I still like them and I still support them. But something about Huda Beauty, and it's not even Huda herself, it's just the brand that I don't know. I'm just like, I don't know. All of her products, I'm, I'm never like blown away by. I think this is the only thing I still own by her is the Amethyst Obsessions palette. And it's just because purple shadows are my favorite and I, I feel an attachment to purple eyeshadows. But even this probably will get decluttered in my next declutter. I don't know. Sorry if that offends anybody. And I don't have like an actual reason as to why I don't really like Huda Beauty. And again, it's not Huda herself that I don't like. She's fine. Um, but the brand itself, I'm just never like excited about anymore, I guess. Um, three, are there any brands you thought were so expensive you've never purchased anything from them that you now consider one of their, what? I can't read my own writing. Are there any brands you thought were so expensive you'd never purchased from them that you now consider one of their products a holy grail? Yes, it cosmetics. I actually have two products that I consider a holy grail. First thing being their, um, confidence in a cream moisturizer. I don't currently have that. I am out. 
and this. This is the Bye Bye Foundation <laughs> Full Coverage Moisturizer. This is my favorite foundation. As you can see, I'm almost out of it. I need to get another one. Um, this is in the shade Fair. I don't even know why, but kind of, or It Cosmetics was always one of those brands that I was like, I'm not super excited about them and they're really expensive, so I just don't think I'll ever buy anything from them. But then I got both of those products actually in subscription boxes and fell in love with both of them. So now I'm like, I have to have them all. And I really wanna try more things from It Cosmetics because I've never been disappointed in anything I've tried from them. So, four. What is a popular brand you've never tried and don't think you will? Why? Natasha Denona. Um, nothing against the brand, nothing against her. Don't even really know who she is, very, to be honest. But, um, I don't know. I feel like they're super hyped up, super expensive, and I don't really get it. <laughs> um, which, I mean, I, I've never tried any of her products, so maybe they are worth the money. But to me, $128 for an eyeshadow palette is too much, and I won't do it. So, um... If she were ever to like come out with something cheaper or maybe more affordable, maybe I would try it, but it's just too expensive and I don't, I don't know. I feel like there's shadows that are the same kind of idea, color, consistency, that kind of thing that I already own and love that I don't need to spend the obnoxious amount of money that they want. So five, um, what brand perfectly encapsulates your current makeup aesthetic? Explain. This one was hard. Cause I don't really have a makeup aesthetic. Like I love purple eyeshadows. Um, I love colorful eyeshadows. I'll do a neutral eyeshadow. I like bold lips. I like nude lips. I like everything. So I think the brand that I pick is ColourPop simply because I feel like they also do everything <laughs> and they're really affordable, which I appreciate because I love affordable makeup and I hate spending so much money on makeup, but I do it. Um, I've actually recently put in two orders from ColourPop, so. But I'm picking them because they've got the new Sailor Moon collab, which is anime. I love anime. I'm a nerd. It's fine. Um, I love Disney. They've got all the Disney collaborations. Um, Kathleen Lights is one of my favorite YouTubers. She's constantly doing collaborations with them. But I also feel like they have the bold lips that I love, but they also have the neutral lips that I love. Their eyeshadow palettes. They have cute and girly eyeshadow palettes. The meant to be uh eyeshadow palette I want to try so bad but they also have like bold colorful palettes like the so jaded palette and they've got neutral palettes like the going coconut palette um but their packaging I always love their packaging I think it's super pretty I just I've never had anything by Colourpop that I'm like ugh about so we're going Colourpop six what are are oh, nope I'm blind I'm sorry um, are there any brands you haven't wanted to try purely because of the packaging? Yes, and I don't want to say this one, but Arclo Beauty, which is RCL Beauty's brand. I love RCL Beauty. I'm subscribed to her. She's great. And I think I eventually will pick up the products just because I want to support her. But I don't love the packaging. <laughs> like the triangular shaped eyeshadow palettes are just kind of weird to me. Like, I'm all about new packaging and stuff. Like, I love Jeffree Star palettes because they're new and they're exciting. But, I don't know, the triangles just kind of off-put me for some reason. Especially her lip glosses because the lids are, like, this big and the bottle's, like, this big. And for some reason, that just, I don't love it. But I do want to try the product, so I guess this is, like, halfway answering it. But eventually, I think I'll try them, but I'm not in, like, any hurry to do it. Maybe if she launches, like, other products... I'll be more excited to pick those up, but I still love RCL Beauty. I still think she's amazing. Her voice is beautiful. She has an amazing song out right now, so nothing against her, but not excited about her packaging. Um, question seven. Is there a brand that you only tried because of packaging? Were you happy with the product? This question I found kind of funny because I'm actually planning on doing a video here soon about um, like buying makeup just solely based on the packaging and seeing if it's good, I think it'll be really fun. So I thought that question was funny, but two brands immediately popped up into my head. The first being Makeup Revolution, more specifically I Heart Revolution. I don't actually own anything from them currently, but every time I see something, especially those like teddy bear eyeshadow palettes, I'm like, I need it. <laughs> I don't even know if it's worth it, but this video is kind of my excuse to try. So we'll do that soon. The other brand that popped in my head was Lunar Beauty which I don't really know why it popped into my head because 
I, if I'm being honest, I purchased the things because mainly Manny anyway, and I love YouTuber brands, but everything that he's come out with, the packaging has been like, yes, amazing, which I think is why it popped into my head. I actually have like everything right here, but I do love all of his products and even if the packaging wasn't great, I'd still be purchasing them. So this is like, again, halfway answering the question, but like his lip glosses are so cute. This is a liquid lip and a lip gloss. We've got the highlighters that look like this. The packaging is just always grade A with him. Um, this is great. This is great. I just have like every palette that he owns here. So yes, I think Lunar Beauty kind of answers the question because I'd still buy him even if the packaging weren't great, wasn't great, but Yes, the packaging helps sell it. Okay, eight. Some would say drugstore and high-end prices are starting to overlap. What brands are guilty of this? A lot of them, unfortunately, but the ones that pop into my head immediately, Pixi right away. Um, I think like their setting spray that I love right here. This is like 16 bucks, I think, which is crazy for a setting spray from the drugstore. Um, Milani is getting there with their new like green tea and hemp stuff that they just released. It's like 12 to $20 each. Their eyeshadow palettes are like 20 bucks now. Physician's Formula is getting up there. NYX I feel like has always kind of been up there. Some of their stuff is like 5 bucks. Some of it's like 30 That contour palette that they released like 5-10 years ago was like 30 bucks then. So unfortunately I feel like this is happening more and more and I feel like it's going to continue happening. Wish it wouldn't, but there's always brands like e.l.f. that don't do that, which I appreciate. So, nine. <sighs> With anti-consumerism and eat the brand mentality, don't know what that means, taking over the beauty space, are there any brands you still feel lo loyalty towards? Why? The brand that immediately popped into my head was Too Faced, but I no longer feel that way. Um, I used to be like everything Too Faced came out with, I had to have, and I just don't think I'm that way anymore just because of all of the like drama that circulates them. And then unfortunately, I feel like a lot of their eyeshadow palettes, which is my main obsession, have kind of gone downhill. Sorry, don't kill me. Um, but the one that I feel like now is beauty YouTuber brands um, because there are things that are not gonna work out for me that I still feel like I needed in my life just because Jaclyn Hill put it out or Laura Lee put it out, that kind of thing. So, any collab that's YouTuber based or any brand that's YouTuber based, Lunar Beauty, <laughs> that's another example. So that's kind of where my loyalty lies, just because I feel like, I don't know. I mean, I know <laughs> I have like 100 subscribers, so I'm not like a real YouTuber or anything, but um, I feel like if I was in their position and somebody else watching me, I would want them to support me too, just because I feel like they're we're all part of like one community kind of thing. So I want to support everyone on YouTube. So that's where my loyalty lies, I guess. Okay. 10. Another controversial one. Have you ever felt betrayed by a brand? What happened? Morphe. <laughs> um, pretty much everything they do anymore. Uh, the big one is the Jaclyn Hill palette, which I think I actually have. Yes, I do have right here. So the Jaclyn Hill palette is the very first original launch of the first palette it is still my holy grail favorite palette but I feel like I can't talk about it anymore because, here it is, because they changed the formula and didn't tell anybody. Um, they even said recently that Jaclyn Hill herself didn't know, which I don't know how true that is, but um, who was I watching? Jen Loves Reviews, she just did like a big thing on this, so if you want to know more about that, check her out for sure. But basically, they changed the formula, they didn't release it. This is common in the makeup world, unfortunately. I wish it wasn't, I wish that you had to like include something that said, hey, we did this. Even Mel Thompson, the one that I saw do this first, she said the same thing about Tarte, which I didn't even realize they changed. Um, they're like some primer they changed. I didn't even realize that, but it is very common and very unfortunate. But the reason the Morphe one stands out to me so much is because they don't label themselves cruelty-free or vegan, but they are cruelty-free. And the formula for the very original one was vegan, but then when they relaunched it, they included Carmine, which I believe is crushed animal, or not crushed animals, crushed bugs, which I guess is an animal, or something of that nature, um, or beetle secretion, something like that, I don't remember, but it makes it no longer vegan. So a lot of vegan um, 
consumers can no longer use these palettes and nobody was made aware of it. So if you're not somebody who like religiously checks ingredients or something of that nature and you are a vegan user, this palette's no longer able to be used for you, which sucks. And they it kind of ruined like a whole, what is it called? <laughs> like a whole community of buyers without even telling them. So I think that really sucks and it makes me really sad and I feel betrayed by it. So Morphe. Um, 11, any brands you feel give off exclusivity, exclusivity vibes, making you feel like you're not pretty, rich, cool, etc. enough to have. I feel this way about luxury brands a lot. Like the specific ones would be Christian Louboutin, Pat McGrath, Dior, that kind of thing. And I feel this way because I don't know, <laughs> just like their price tags first of all are outrageous. So I always feel like, yeah, I can't afford it. But the other thing, like I feel their campaigns, I'm obviously not a super small skinny girl, so that's fine. But I feel like their campaigns are very much high and very skinny, tiny model, superstar, that kind of thing. And kind of off puts me to their brand because I feel like, especially nowadays, a lot of beauty brands are more inclusive. They've got all skin colors, all ethnicities, all genders, all um, sizes, which I think is amazing and I think it's the way it should be. But brands like Christian Louboutin, Dior, and even Pat McGrath, I feel like have not gone that way yet. And I don't know a lot of Pat McGrath um, campaigns, so I could be very wrong on that, but I still get that vibe from the brand for some reason. So that's where I stand with that. If I am completely wrong on that, please correct me down below and let me know that I suck. So, <laughs> but number 12, what's worse? What's worse? Too many makeup releases or lackluster qu quarterly launches from brands you're usually excited about. Definitely the latter. Um, a lot of makeup launches all at once can be very overwhelming and I'm very aware of that, but they're still usually like good quality. Like especially ColourPop is what comes to mind. They release things all the time. I cannot keep up, but they're always usually really good. Somewhere like Let's use Laura Lee Los Angeles, for example. I'm always excited about her stuff. She doesn't release stuff super often, but when she does, I really like the stuff she releases. So I feel like if she were somebody doing the same thing, but her products sucked when they come out, I would be very not enticed to want to buy anything else. So I think definitely the, the, the lackluster quality would be worse. Um, 13. Have brand trips or sponsored videos ever made you actually interested in the product they're promoting? Actually, no. Um, if it's something I'm already interested in, then I will definitely like want to see reviews. But honestly, it almost off puts me in a way. Not if it's like one person here or there that's doing it, but like the Marc Jacobs Foundation that came out not too long ago. Everybody was doing sponsored videos for that. And it almost made me like less interested in the product just because I felt like if you're having to pay all of these people to talk about this one product, is it really that good kind of thing. Um, but there are brands that'll pick like one or two beauty YouTubers and they'll have them do brand videos. That doesn't bother me. Um, but it's not also something that's going to like entice me to want to buy it. I will say though the brand trip videos I really like to watch just because I think it's exciting to see all of these people interacting together. But it doesn't make me want to buy the product. <laughs> but yeah, that's it. Okay, 14. Any any brands you would like to see sold in Ulta or Sephora? Um, yes, actually. Uh, Estate Cosmetics is one that comes to mind immediately. This is the only product I own by them. It's a highlight, but I love this. Um, it's called Do Me Afterglow, but it's like a purpley highlight. It's so pretty and I love it. And I would love to see this brand more often because I'm always wanting to try things from them. I don't really find them anywhere. Um, the other one I don't actually want anything from, but it's Lunatic Labs or Lunatic Cosmetics. I think it's Lunatic Labs Cosmetics. Um, every time I see somebody talking about something from them, I'm like super interested to try it, but I'm always hesitant to order from their website. I don't know why, but I would love to see them more regularly available so that I could purchase them. Uh, 15, final and last question, which is the same thing. Um, if you could give any brand a rebranding, what brand and what would you change? I have two, Smashbox and CoverFX, both for the same reason. Um, I don't actually have anything from Smashbox right now, but I do have something from CoverFX, so we'll show this, this little guy here. Um, CoverFX and Smashbox, I've never been 
disappointed by anything that I've tried from them, but I've also never been like super enticed to want to try them just because I feel like they don't really do a lot of campaigns. They don't really promote their stuff well and their packaging is always pretty bland, pretty boring, which is so sad to say, but I just feel like they don't really, they're very minimalistic in their packaging, which is fine, but it's not something that excites me. So if I could change anything, I would change their packaging and I would change their campaigns just to make them like put stuff out there more, be more excited, be more whatever, just talk about their stuff more is what I would change. So that completes this video, you guys. Um, let me know down below if you guys are going to do this tag, definitely tell me so I can watch yours, of course. And don't forget to like this video before you go and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any more of my future videos. Bye guys.